in eight women's events so far. They've won six gold medals. But the whole world is not celebrating with China at the moment. Neil Brooks won an Olympic gold medal for Australia in 1980. A lot of his friends that he competed against are here at the moment, and a lot of the coaches that have been around the sport for many, many years, Neil. What are they saying about the Chinese success? It's pretty blunt and straightforward, Bruce. They think they're cheating. They think you're on drugs. Well, what can the world do about it? Because there's, still, there's a feeling of disillusionment here, and it could spoil the championship. Well, the thing is, they don't race internationally like a lot of other countries, so they don't get scrutinised as much. They have no random drug testing within their own organisation, and it's just got to be sorted out because it's spoiling the sport. I know you spoke to David Haller. We're about to take that interview in a moment. What are his credentials? He's one of the most creditable coaches in international swimming. He's coached on an international level for over 20 years, coached in Asia for six, and world champion, Olympic champion Duncan Goodview is in, in his stable. So he's a very well-respected man in the world of swimming. Well, David Haller is the current British head coach. Neil asked him about the Chinese situation. Well, unfortunately, world swimming is of the opinion that they're not doing it just purely on hard work, that they are getting assistance through old East German methods. And uh, recently, four swimmers have been picked up for uh, drug abuse, and that does raise a question over their performance this year. When you talk about, when they, they talk about drug abuse, what do they, how do they do it? I mean, we just say anabolic steroids, what kind of programs are put in place? Are, are you familiar with any? I'm not, not familiar with it at all. All I know is that it can in, uh, enable you to train much harder, recover quicker, and then train again harder, and consequently your training and your, uh, your fitness and strength increases dramatically. For me, looking at them, physically, they look to be superior. I've never seen athletes look that good from just hard work and weight training. How do you feel about that? Well, the, the difference is, to me, I mean, I've seen these Germans and the Chinese are very, very similar to them. But the, uh, the, the critical question to ask is where are the men swimming? If, you know, if their training program is so sophisticated, which they claim, and they take various Chinese medicines, which I'm sure do help, uh, where are the male swimmers? We've had one male swimmer swim here, and I think he was from like 25th in the men's restaurant, and, and that's it so far. Where does this leave the sport then? I mean, you know, Jenny Thompson the other day sat out and said, when Olympic won the gold, I won the silver. Yeah, well, that's the problem. You know, it's, uh, if anyone does great swims here, even in the male, uh, we're getting uh, rather cynical about the whole sport. Oh, they've got to be on different this or different that. And it's a sad thing that the sport, uh, you know, people aren't, are recognised as champions in their mm. true worth rather than everyone thinks, well, they've got to be doing something different to be a world champion nowadays. And that's a sad thing. I think the, the Chinese are on drugs, do you? I think that the four drug tests that proved positive obviously indicate that they are doing that. Do you believe then that the, uh, the talking about the Australians, the Americans, other European countries yeah. will eventually come back on top of the Chinese? Well, I said yesterday before the competition started that they can be beaten by someone who is technically superior and is very well conditioned. Because they're not technically that good. They're very, very strong swimmers, the Chinese. But I would say that uh, the two winners yesterday, Van Elmsick and, uh, and Samantha Riley in the breaststroke, were technically far superior, and that's how they beat them. So you wouldn't expect a Chinese male sprinter to come up and knock Alexander Popov off? No, uh, there is one here, I believe, and he's quite a reasonable swimmer. But, you know, with men's swimmers, uh, you don't need that sort of uh, uh, strength that uh, the drugs will give a young lady. Young ladies have got the strength of young men, uh, but we don't need weightless strength in men's swimming. What do, you, what do you say, as a coach yourself, what do you say to someone who's got a bronze behind two Chinese at the World Championship? You're the best in the world. And that's the, that's the same. We had six British swimmers during the 70s and 80s, girl swimmers, who would have won World or Olympic titles, who were beaten by East Germans who were on, on drugs. So we, know, we know now they were on drugs. They've come clean. They've come clean. For the first time. For the first time, and we know it. Uh, and that's a sad thing. We've had six swimmers who were the best in the world and they never ever will be recognised for their efforts. And that is a sad indication of the state of the sport. Neil, was it fair to say that David's comments are a true reflection of the general feeling here? Guilt edge 100%, no doubt.